Welcome to the Fast Leader Podcast, where we explore convenient yet effective shortcuts that will help you get ahead and move forward faster by becoming a better leader. And now, here's your host, customer and employee engagement expert and certified emotional intelligent practitioner, Jim Rimbach. The number one thing that contributes to customer loyalty is emotions. So move onward and upward faster by gaining significantly deeper insight and understanding of your customer journey and personas with emotional intelligence. With your empathy mapping workshop, you'll learn how to evoke and influence the right customer emotions that generate improved customer loyalty and reduce your cost to operate. Get over your emotional hump now by going to empathymapping.com to learn more. Okay, Fast Leader Legion, today I'm excited because I have somebody on the show today who's really going to help us with the customer experience where those moments of truth actually happen. Tal Schnall was born and raised in a small town called Rehovot in Israel. He is the oldest son of three boys. He moved to the United States when he was 17 years old. He learned his core values from his mother and father who always led by their own example. They gave him the values and virtues of moral character to live the right way. Growing up, Tal usually could be found with friends playing sports or occasionally reading an inspiring book. He would also take special notes when his mother was preparing their home and making great effort to welcome visitors. After obtaining a hotel degree from the University of North Texas, Tal started out in the hospitality field in small restaurants and moved to the hotel industry. Tal is now a customer experience speaker and trainer with more than 20 years experience as a lead brand trainer and in hotel operations. He's worked for the top hotel brands such as Marriott, Hilton, Starwood, Intercontinental Hotel Group, to develop their customer service training, leadership development, corporate training, and executive coaching. Today, he still loves what he does, training and developing people in the hotel industry and helping leaders and frontline people to provide excellent service. It's all about serving and adding value to the people from all walks of life. And he's continually adding value to create sustainable, measurable results that improve customer satisfaction, profitability, and organizational culture. Tal is also a leadership blogger and influencer, and he's one of the top contributing bloggers on Link to Leadership in 2014, and he is a Lead Change Group guest blogger. Tal currently lives in Dallas, Texas, where he loves to stay active and keep physically fit, seeking out great dance music and enjoying the natural areas of White Rock Lake. Tal Schnall, are you ready to help us get over the hump? Absolutely. Glad to connect with you, Jim, and happy birthday to you, sir. (laughs) I appreciate that. Uh, I've given our legion a little bit about you, but can you tell us what your current passion is so that we can get to know you even better? Absolutely. My my current passion is adding value to front lines and leaders in the customer service world and to coach and train people to inspire them to another level of greatness. You know, I mean, you say that so easily, but when I start thinking about the whole people side of it, as well as people serving people, when you throw that whole mix into it, and then ha- all of the, you know, raising customer expectations component, you know, I, I start thinking about a whole lot of, you know, s- squeaky wheels and difficulties, and you know, also you know, just, you know, looking at the long-term nature of, you know, continually serving. So, I mean, come on, when you look at the work that you're doing, where do you find you're spending most of your effort and time? It's a great question, and I think obviously it took me 20 years to uh, to connect to my passion and purpose as we go through the to the experiences that builds our character in the industry. But uh, I think that the biggest challenge for us is to continuously work with the talent in our industries because the talent delivers the customer experience, and I think many organizations uh, seem to understand that intellectually, but not uh, in in performing in a way that really delivers results for their customers. And I say this because customer service or customer experience begins at home, just like it started with my mother and father. So our home is our business, our organization. Customer experience is the result of internal customer experience. If your employees are taken care of, they'll take care of the customer. Well, you know, you bring up a really interesting point too, when you start talking about that frontline component and, you know, things starting in the home And what, you know, so when you start looking at the dynamics associated with, you know, the modern day workforce, you know, let's go back to when you first started in hospitality, you know, to where it is now. When you think about the worker who's coming in, you know, to apply and and seeking employment, how are they different? 
Such a great question because we talk about this every day, how, you know, when I started out in the business, it was definitely a career. Uh, you were building yourself up. You were going through experiences that they would mold you uh, as a as a professional, as a someone in a hospitality career or customer service career. The great difference um, that I've learned, and and I didn't appreciate that early on, was I was surrounded by people that I really inspired leadership in me to become what they were at the time where they were the top leadership in our hotel. And I think that we need to do a better job in inspiring others to, to be the same. I mean, I, my greatest joy is always, and I've had this in my experience, was when someone got promoted uh, to take my job or to take uh, even something better than my what my job is. And so I think the challenge for us is to continuously develop our talent, to continuously get the excitement and the energy about service. And I know you've talked about the, the challenges, but at the same time is I flipped that around is when was the last time you, you made somebody's day and you went home and told your family or your friends how you wowed someone. I know I received a letter the other day from my general manager. And out of all everything else you can combine, there's nothing more rewarding to know that a customer wrote a letter to someone in your organization to praise what you've done for them. You added value to their life. You know, that's a really interesting point. I mean, you know, how often do customers actually go to that level these days and actually write? When you start thinking about going back to that frontline worker and how they're different today, you know, you have, you know, you have, you talk about brand and the importance of brand and many of the hotels that you work for, brand is really key for them and, and really important and core is that I, I have a worker that, you know, maybe he didn't learn all of those hospitality things in the home, didn't learn you know, the customer service components, didn't learn about, you know, serving others. I mean, how are they able to be successful and be able to deliver on a, you know, to a brand that, you know, is so important? Sure. That's a great question. Well, first of all, I think you got to start with the hiring process being a selective hiring organization. You're going to look for that, that friendliness, your attitude. Um, there's, a, there's an old saying that you, you, you train for the skill and you hire the smile or you hire the attitude. And I think if you're looking at the great brands, including the, the, the brand that I work for, which is Marriott Renaissance, um, you know, we, we hire for personalities. We hire for friendliness. The rest of the stuff can be trained, um, you know, and so we dedicate a lot of time on who is the right person to take care of our guests. That's number one. Number two is to continuously developing and training people about the type of brand culture that we're trying to to instill and engage with our guests and customers. It is more competitive than ever nowadays as you talk about branding and someone standing out. Why would they go over to your establishment rather than someone else? So many places have become a commodity. But what's really going to make the difference if someone on your team is really making the positive difference? And so we've got to do two things. We've got to select the right people, bring the personalities, and also continuously developing, training them, creating an environment for them to grow uh, so they can provide the level of service that we would like, uh, our, our customers would like. Okay. So when I'm thinking about that front line and those moments of truth and you know, really developing those frontline people, I mean, the reality is we all know that you know, what we learn and what we're exposed to in the classroom you know, doesn't translate you know, to an actual job behavior. I mean, that's just not the way it works because if that was the case, you know, all the classes we take, we would be good to go. But it just doesn't work that way. You have to implement and put things in practice. And so to help people, um, you know, to do that, they ha you, there has to be like frameworks and, you know, little tricks and tips uh, in order for them to be successful. So when you're working with the front line specifically in order to have them develop and create you know, those wow experiences, what kind of tips or tools or tricks or frameworks are you giving them so that it's top of mind and it's easy to deliver? Absolutely. So we used a lot of a um, couple of things. Uh, one is a, a huddle, which has a 15 to 20 minute huddle. And we are going over those what we call reinforcement topics. So you're right. You know, someone can go to a class, but how will they apply it and be very intentional about it? So we're consistently doing what we call a pre-shift huddle. And that is a 15 minute 
huddle to go over uh, guest feedback, uh, coaching opportunities with our team, and also keep reminding them why they're there, their purpose, and what are the most important things that we need to bring out in those experiences. What does a, a Marriott Renaissance experience looks like? And so the more we can engage with them, the better they can apply those in each and every moment with that customer and continuously being there as a leader, you need to be on the front line with them so you can see what works, what doesn't work. What, what do I need to give? Where do I need to coach? Where do I need to do something different? And so you're there being an, an engaged leader. You've got to see what, what, what they're doing and reinforce, reinforce and reinforce. Communication is the key. Well, okay. So you also mentioned something that to me I think is really important and that is that whole career pathing component. So when you are working, you know, with organizations, how much of your work actually goes into helping them create and then therefore communicate that whole career pathing uh, process? Sure. Um, What we do is actually what we call personal development plan. And we sit down with every every individual on our team and we try to learn more about them, who they are as a person and what their aspirations are. And also the big thing is connecting our culture to their learning and development. So where we start off, we start off with what this person is working on, what are their, what are their aspirations like, and then connecting the big purpose, the big picture and the culture, how their contribution and development can add value to our customers. So it's a process, it's a system in place. We visit with the employee on a monthly basis and we're creating development plans that they can be engaged with rather than something that came from corporate and here's a document and you need to to do what you need to do. I, I don't think that's engaging. I think you continuously having those conversations and finding out what turns them on. And once you do that, you create a path, a road for them. And through that, you're finding out that they have more more aspirations. You're finding out, what do I really want to spend my time on? We use Strength Finder 2.0, which is another great resource. <clears throat> we may use the DISC profile. All these little tools help our team to become more successful. So when you look at um, a typical you know, engagement for you, uh, what does that kind of look like? Well, it looks like uh, the engagement that I work with leaders and frontline leaders, it is hands-on training. It is developing the skill sets that creates a better engagement with their employees. It creates more cultural values and also creates performance systems and accountability for their teams and departments to deliver exceptional service. So we have a system in place, a process that enables them to win more better customers service and better internal customer service. So when you're working with, you know, these groups, I can imagine that there's a whole lot of things that you have to focus in on and really give them, you know, that, that, that focus and help them with that purpose and, you know, really get to some points of clarity. And one of the things that we do on the Fast Leader Show is look at quotes to kind of help us do that. Is there a quote or two that you can share? Yes, absolutely. Uh, there's one uh, by Martin Luther King Jr. Life's most important, uh, life's most persistent and urgent question is, "What are you doing for others?" So I can only imagine why that that particular quote is so important to you. I mean, it just kind of leads to the whole, you know, hospitality feeling and why you've actually taken this this path in your life. But talking about past, you know, and even you know moving from Israel and you know coming here to the states and. You know, you were a young man and going on to college and you know, going through the transition of working for organizations and now having your own practice. There's a lot of humps that we have to get over. Is there a time when you've gotten over the hump that you can share? Sure. Um, it actually happened in 2001, and, and I was uh, moving from a supervi- from actually an hourly position to a supervisory position, and I was a supervisor for a couple of years, and then I wanted to uh, venture out, out to become a manager, uh, a front office guest services manager at, at a bigger hotel. And I, I made the leap without realizing that I was missing a lot of manager leadership skills in order for me to, to be successful. And so I failed. Uh, I fell on my face the first couple of years in taking that position. And there was really a gap going from 
uh, where I was a supervisor to become a department manager, um, there was a gap. And, and I, so I paid the price and I, I fell on my face and it taught me that I should obviously take this, the proper steps uh, along, along the ride to make myself successful and wherever I needed to be. So it was a moment of uh, humility for me because I knew that I wasn't serving the people in the best way. My competence wasn't there. The inspiration wasn't there. And so I was kind of lost in the woods, if you say. And I think that um, that created um, a situation where I wasn't at my best in serving people at their best. And it was a bigger hotel, much bigger than where I came from. Uh, moved from, from supervising 10 employees to almost 35. There, that's where the, uh, the gap was. And I needed to, to learn more about how to really uh, add value. So when you start talking about a gap, I mean, what do you mean by a gap? I mean, you're talking about falling on your face. What caused you to fall on your face? I mean, you talk about skills, but what, what, what kind of skills? And, and how are you able to obtain those and get back up? Because you and I talked about something um, be- before we started actually recording, you know, about how, you know, you have to go down or you have to fall in order to get up. Uh, and so that, that falling piece is important and you have to do it. And you have to, you know, use it as that, you know, point of humility like you were talking about. You know, and 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 move forward. I mean, that's one of the ways that we move forward faster. Absolutely, and I think that there has to be failure before you can become success. The skill set that I was lacking were leadership skills and management skills. In order for me to, uh, you know, when you are, it's almost like moving from a small village to a big city. There are some things that you need to know and do in order to be successful in, in, in the bigger in a bigger place. And so it was almost going from a very small environment, operationally smaller, to something that is operationally buzzing and very busy and with a lot more employees, a bigger brand. And I thought that my skill level on the leadership part and the management part part of skill set were enough. And the reality taught me differently. It's not enough. You need to develop more leadership skills and more management skills in order to manage a group, uh, you know, going from 10 people to 35 people. There's, there's there where the difference is. So, I, I mean, I can imagine, you know, there's a multitude of different processes that you had to have when you have that larger group. So, that, I mean, that's the management side of it. Uh, you know, and then the leadership side is all that emotional intelligence, you know, work that you have to do in order to, you know, have people focus on that purpose, right? And, you know, keep them, you know, in, you know give them an opportunity to where motivation actually grows. Uh, and so when you start thinking about those two different things, you know, what was most important in your success going forward? The most important part is, is my own personal development. Uh, you can give what you don't have. And so I realized as I actually, for the longest time, uh, you know, one of the reasons I didn't, I didn't like school was re- reading a lot. But I, I, I don't remember the exact time and I started reading personal development books, John Maxwell, Stephen Covey, Jim Rohn, uh, Brian Tracy, and all the, all the great guys that gives us inspiration and development to hone our skills. And I really was very, very, very intentional to today. I'm very intentional about personal development. And that's what really changed my business life and my personal life is that I put a lot of resources in me in order to provide better leadership to just people around me, family, community, and business. So when they start looking at making that transition from, you know, working for an organization and, you know, going into your own, you know, practice and, and working with, you know, clients across multiple different, you know, industries, is that, you know, you, you've got a lot of things that happen with that process. You have a lot of things that's going on. So if you look at one of the things that you have na- right now as a goal, what would it be? Um, it would be to to make a positive impact for people. My, uh, I'll share with you in the following way. When I was uh, very, I mean, when I was in my twenties, um, I had a different outlook. I thought that the organization or the business that I'm at uh, owes me the training and development, and therefore, that's just how I'm going to succeed, and others are going to succeed. I think that what happens in in several places that speaks to my heart is that there's a lot of talk about 
training and development and they want results and they want better customer service, they want better customer experience. My question is, what are you intentionally doing inside your organization to create that? And we're not talking about the first day of orientation. We're talking about high intention daily daily engagement, whether it's training or development and continuously pushing people to where you can take them every day is what I was missing in my early twenties. I didn't, you know, people don't talk about it. People didn't talk about culture. They didn't talk about a, a lot of these things. All they wanted is they knew they wanted an outcome and they'll train you a little bit, maybe the first day, but they didn't really take you through that development and uh, to, to make their employees successful. And I think if your employees are successful, they'll deliver a better experience for your customers. You know, I think you bring up a really interesting point when you start talking about the work. I mean, so for me, it's, you know, looking at change, right? Is that, you know, all the studies that have been done, done upon, up, about change is, you know, you, you, you know, you can do the whole bottom up, top down, inside out, outside in, all of those things. But if you spend the effort and time in your front line, and there, there is no, you know, process by which the organization itself can actually, you know, d- encourage and nurture the change. That individual is going to be stunted in their in in their growth and their career opportunities. So it's like, okay, we've done all this individual work, and then we've thrown them into a system that, you know, really is isn't good for them. Yeah, I mean, I think that as leaders, I mean, we're working in, and I've worked with cross industries, um, not just hospitality. Everyone wants to, to achieve the customer experience, a greater customer experience, but they're they're not saying it. But I can tell what I in engaging with them, I can tell what they want. And initially, what they want is the employee experience. They, this, uh, I'm the culture guy, so when people hire me to, to develop a better culture and to create a culture of excellence organization, this is what they want because ultimately, the employee experience will deliver the customer experience. I've never been or experienced in my years of having a negative culture or toxic culture to create a, a customer experience that's positive. I've never seen that happen. So there's a cause and effect. And most leaders, most managers understand that intellectually. I like to highlight the word intellectually. But what are you doing on a daily basis to be highly intentional about creating those? I remember a story about Southwest Airlines and a consultant asked him, I'm a little bit kind of taken aback about what you guys are doing, all this love and culture and spirit how come your competitor doesn't do the same? And their CEO said that apparently everybody thinks it's beneath them. And so this is a very shallow way. We really need to be intentional about what we say, what do we do? There's all these mantras, but are we actually doing something to create those moments? Well, that's a great point. And Tal, the Fast Leader Legion wishes you the very best. Now, before we move on, let's get a quick word from our sponsor. Call Center Coach develops and unites the next generation of call center leaders. Through our e-learning and community, individuals gain knowledge and skills in the six core competencies that is the blueprint that develops high-performing call center leaders. Successful supervisors do not just happen. So go to callcentercoach.com to learn more about enrollment and download your copy of the Supervisor Success Path ebook now. All right, here we go, Fast Leader Legion. It's time for the Hump Day Hoedown. Okay, Tal, the Hump Day Hoedown is the part of our show where you give us good insights fast. So I'm going to ask you several questions, and your job is to give us robust, yet rapid responses that are going to help us move onward and upward faster. Tal Snow, are you ready to hoe down? Yes, sir. All right. So what do you think is holding you back from being an even better leader today? I think just working on relationships, uh, being highly intentional about those relationships and actually re-energizing um, older relationships into what I do every day. That's something that I want to invest more and grow more on a daily basis. What is the best leadership advice you have ever received? Giving is better than receiving. What is one of your secrets that you believe contributes to your success? Personal development is is the key to my success, and I would highly recommend people to develop themselves because you can't give what you don't have. What do you feel is one of your best tools that helps you lead in business or life? 
Um, I would say coaching people. That's uh, probably my highlights in working with leaders across the industries. Um, they've always wanted that extra coaching sessions and development and working with their leaders for months after we do the initial training and set up. So I would say coaching is the best tool that I, that I have. What would be one book that you'd recommend to our listeners? And it could be from any genre. The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. Okay, Fast Leader Legion, you can find links to that and other bonus information from today's show by going to fastleader.net forward slash Tal Schnall. Okay, tell us my last hope to hold on question. Imagine you were given the opportunity to go back to the age of 25, and you've been given the opportunity to take the knowledge and skills that you have now back with you. But you can't take everything back. You can only choose one. So what skill or piece of knowledge would you take back with you and why? Definitely self-development, self-awareness, emotional uh, emotional intelligence skills. If I had those when I was younger, I think they would be extremely beneficial to my career. Uh, you know, no regrets, but I think that self-awareness is really the ultimate test of every leader who wants to grow themselves to a greater leader. Hey, Al Schnall, it was an honor to spend time with you today. Can you please share with the Fast Leader Legion how they can connect with you? Uh, they can definitely find me on LinkedIn, um, you know, uh, but just typing my name, Tal Schnell, it's T-A-L, the last name is S-H-N-A-L-L. Uh, definitely would love to connect with your audience and find out how I can add value to their life. Tal Schnell, thank you for sharing your knowledge and wisdom. The Fast Leader Legion honors you and thanks you for helping us get over the hump. Thank you for joining me on the Fast Leader Show today. For recaps, links from every show, special offers, and access to download and subscribe, if you haven't already, head on over to fastleader.net so we can help you move onward and upward faster. <laughs>